everyone, welcome to another episode of ABUSD Storytime Science. I'm Mrs. Gillette. Today's story is the three R's, reuse, reduce, recycle, and is the second in our Earth Day series. This book is written by Naria Roca and illustrated by Rosa Curto. It's read today by Jalen Givens, ABCI Explainer, Class of 2020. In this story, you'll learn about the garbage that collects in our landfills and steps you can take to clean up our planet. As you listen, identify ways you can reduce, reuse, and recycle the waste generated in your house and classroom. The three R's. Reuse, Reduce, Recycle by Nira Roca, narrated by Jalen Givens. Do you know the letter R? It is the first letter in three words that teach us different ways to fight pollution. It is the R in reuse, reduce, and recycle. Do you know these words? Reuse, things that are still good shape, such as your big brother's jacket. Reduce, the amount of things we throw away, such as paper cups. Recycle, old things to make new ones, such as a puppet out of an old sock. In the town where Paul lives, people throw their garbage bags in a garbage container at the corner. In the morning, a garbage truck empties the container and takes the garbage bags. Do you know where? To a garbage landfill or dump, which is a huge place in the mountains or the countryside far from the city. In Paul's town, however, there are so many people and so much garbage is produced that every landfill is full already and nobody knows where to build another. So they have to build a huge furnace called an incinerator to burn all the waste material. Nobody likes to live close by. People think the smoke coming out of the chimney is harmful to plants, animals, and people. At Paul's school, they have talked about the huge amount of waste produced in just one day. They have decided to reuse as many things as they can. That means that now they will use every object many times until it breaks or cannot be used anymore. At his school, they paint both sides of all sheets of paper, use the empty cans of paint to keep paper clips and rubber bands, and use the pieces of paper left over to make wonderful collages. Do you have any other ideas? At home every day, we use many things as possible. Paul wears the t-shirts that his big brother has outgrown and also plays with many of his old toys. Can you guess how many objects on the right page may be used over and over? Paul's big brother outgrew his bike and now Paul rides it. And since he has no use for his tricycle anymore, he has passed it to his cousin. Something else we do at home and at school is trying to not waste water or electricity. Because this way we help take care of our planet. It seems very little, but the drops of water from a leaky faucet could fill up a bathtub in a day. So keep the water and lights off when they are not needed, of course. When Paul and his family go shopping for food, they take their own baskets or bags made of cloth. By doing that, they won't have to ask for plastic or paper bags at the supermarket. They will reduce the amount of, of plastic and paper made by factories. Reducing means using very little, only what they need. Plastic bags are very handy, but sometimes they end up in the sea where they can be dangerous for animals. Turtles take them for jellyfish and eat them, or they might get tangled up in the plastic rings used to hold cans together. It is very important not to litter the ground, the woods, the beach, the ocean, or the city. At Paul's school, they throw all paper and cardboard into a special street container, then trucks pick up everything and take it to a paper mill where Used paper and cardboard is shredded and washed until it becomes a pulp that is wet and soft. With the pulp they make paper again, when it gets dry, we have 
recycled paper. Practically everything can be recycled. Paper and cardboard, plastic objects, glass, cans. All these things are first shredded, grounded, and pulped. And then they go through different processes that make new drinking cans, glass bottles, plastic containers. At school, we make paper out of torn and wet old papers. Things made with boxes and paper paste. Paul's parents have told him that food scraps can also be recycled. All food that otherwise would be wasted can be used into fertilizer, which is food for plants. The fertilizer produced this way is called compost. The banana peels and melon rinds Paul has just thrown into the garbage can make food for plants, like all food scraps. That's great. What can be recycled? But if we want to recycle, we have to put the waste in special containers. Now in the kitchen at Paul's home, there is a container for things made of plastic, metal, or glass, and another for the other garbage. Also, all newspapers and magazines are neatly tied in packages so that they also can be recycled. At some schools, they also collect used batteries. The children have been told batteries may not be recycled and that they pollute a lot. So it is very important not to throw them in the garbage. That's why the children have made a special container for them. Once it is full, they will take it to the recycling center where the metal from the batteries will be used to make new ones. The drawings to decorate the container are the work of Paul's class. Nice job, isn't it? If we waste less and recycle all we can, there will be less pollution and we will be able to live for a long time in our little planet, breathing smokeless air, swimming in clean waters, and strolling through woods and countryside free of garbage. Paul thinks it is worth the effort. How about you? The end. I hope you enjoyed following Paul and his family around town and that you discovered ways you can help our environment using the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Today I have two activities for you. First, we're going to sort some trash and identify what can be reduced, what can be reused, and what can be recycled. Remember, waste is anything you throw out and don't reuse. By sorting your trash, we are hoping to decrease the amount of waste going to our landfill. So what I did is I have the trash from our kitchen this morning. It has some things like some old aluminum foil, an old rotten avocado, some plastic bottles, have an empty milk tub, some napkins, a plastic container with some eggshells and sweet potato peels, plastic containers, a Ziploc bag, some junk mail, and some miscellaneous cardboard. I also have some plastic bags, paper towel tube, old mail containers, things like that. So these are all things that we gathered. So what I want to do now is I want to sort them into types of materials. So we could sort them into anything metal, plastic, paper, and we'll come up with some others as we go. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have my paper, my plastic, paper, some food, Lots of cardboard. Plastic, paper, and cardboard. So now what I want to do is we want to look to see if there's anything that can be reused. So I know we use these plastic bottles when we do our ping pong ball explosion at, the, at ABCI for the STEM nights. So I'm going to set those aside to take to the center so we can reuse those. 
I also know that we're going to do a second activity today and I need some aluminum foil, I need the avocado, and I'm gonna use one of the plastic bottles. So I'll set those aside for our second activity. And then I can look at everything else. Now I went online for, to the Town of Apple Valley website and I was able to find a list of things that they recycled. So looking at the list, I know that they recycle newspaper so and cardboard. So I'm gonna put these here. They recycle the hard plastic containers, numbers one through seven. And this, if you look on the bottom, has a number five on it, so I know this can be recycled. They do not recycle the flimsy plastic, so I need to put all of those over here. No plastic bags, they don't collect any of that, so I'll put that there. They're not going to recycle used napkins or paper towels, but they do recycle cardboard. They recycle the melt cartons as long as the plastic cap is not on it. Uh, can recycle paper towel tubes, but I also know we use these at the center, so I'm gonna set this aside. And then I also have an activity next week that I need cardboard boxes for. So I am going to take all of these cardboard boxes and set these aside. So all of these I can reuse. I can reuse this seed because I'm going to be using that for an activity later this week as well. So we've reduced the amount of trash that we have so far. Now I wanna think about what we can do to reduce this even further. So looking at the items you have left, I want you to talk with your family to decide if there's any way that you can decrease the amount of items left. Do some research online and see what other families have done to reduce the amount of waste sent to their landfill. Go back and listen to the story again to see if there are any ways that you missed the first time that you can use to reduce, reuse, and recycle. For the second activity, we're going to complete an investigation to answer the question, which materials are biodegradable and which are non-biodegradable? An item is biodegradable if it breaks down or decomposes naturally. So collect some items from your trash to use. I'm going to use the piece of aluminum foil, my old rotten avocado, plastic bottle, and I also grabbed some paper napkins. So what I want you to do is I want you to find a shaded spot outside, a place where you can place these items. Shady, moist if possible. Be sure to put them in an area that animals and small children will not disturb them. You may need to add water to the area if it's too dry. So here's what I'm going to do. I just, I have an old pot that I have some potting soil in. So I'm going to take my paper and put it in one side. I'm going to take my aluminum foil, make a ball of it, and put it in another side, avocado and then I'm going to stand up the plastic bottle. I can kind of bury it a little bit so it, it doesn't fly away. I could even put some water in it to try to, to weigh it down. Now, the desert's dry, so I know I'm probably going to need to add some water to the soil. You wanna keep the soil moist, but you don't necessarily wanna get all of the items wet. If they get wet, that's okay, but you wanna see what will happen naturally to these. So then what I want you to do is I want you to make a journal. Each day I want you to go out to your samples and make some observations. I want you to draw a picture of what you see and explain what's happening to each of the different materials. Which has changed, which has stayed the same. Keep a record for the, for the next week, once a day for about seven days. How do the results affect the amount or types of trash that you generate. Complete a second experiment with items around your house. What other items can you test? Fabric, cardboard, toys. What about wood or a plastic baggie? What do you notice about the decomposition of these items that is the same as the first test? What's different? So thank you for joining us today. Stay tuned for other Earth Day stories and activities you can do with your families later this week. Until I see you again, Stay curious.